What's going on everybody? I just wanted to do a quick overview of my Cayman Lizard enclosure here. Uh, this is Leela. She is now about six months old. Um, best guess, had her in my possession for just under three at this point. Um, she is healthy, active, clean bill of health from the vet. The fecal smear was clear. Uh, it did cost me about $500 but we know that Leela is good to go. Um, I do regular deworming treatments on her. I've shown, I have a video how to do that. Uh, I went through two rounds of it to clear out any kind of parasites that might be living inside her belly. And uh, yeah, they worked out great. Um, she has put on a significant amount of weight and continues to. Um, she's got that fat belly right there. She just ate a live snail as a treat. Um, she's super happy. Um, kind of lackadaisical right now, but she's normally moving around and doing stuff. And um, if I come up to the cage or, or do something, she's always right there with me looking at what's going on. So this enclosure is a 36 inch tall arboreal section paired with a 75 gallon aquarium that accounts for a six foot tall by four foot long by two foot wide enclosure. Uh, it's huge. Biggest reptile enclosure I've ever built myself. Not the biggest one that's coming because she is probably gonna need an upgrade. Um, this enclosure, I, I plan to last her first year, year and a half, depending on how big she gets. Kind of plan it by year. Um, I'm handy at doing this kind of stuff, so um, building an enclosure is, is minimal cost for me and just, just some, some elbow grease and you know we're good to go. So um, we're gonna start off with the arboreal section. So the dry land section here. So I have two sets, two pieces of 12 by 24 inch standard tile, slate tile, um, that is epoxy to the six inch ledge that is left from the aquarium um, because this aquarium is only 18 inches front to back. Um, so I have an epoxy to the actual wood and then everything is sealed with, uh, with dry lock to uh, prevent any kind of water rot or anything like that works well i've done it for years i've done it on these foam backgrounds and aquariums this foam background is 10 cans of great stuff spray foam coated in uh dry lock to seal it for the most part um there's some little ugly spots that i got to touch up some stuff that uh came through it's constantly moving expanding contracting with the with the temperature here um as you can tell this so this is the dry side i have a 75 watt basking bulb uh, basking platform with room to get up, down, in and out of light. Um, she's got a little hide here that stays warm. I made this hide for her to use. There's wet sphagnum moss in there. She doesn't even use it. She'll climb around and kind of do some investigating. Great enrichment for her, but reality is she's not using it as a hide. She sleeps either right here or with her head up in the water or um, out and about. Um, she passes out everywhere or she passes out in her basking spot and that's that um, so I didn't originally plan to put substrate in here but after doing some research and, and kind of feeling her out I did end up going uh, this is two your standard bricks here um, that uh, a couple bricks that are actually uh, enclosing and keeping the substrate in place um, I wanted to keep it as far away from the entry to the water as possible to avoid any substrate crossing into the water and becoming a passel. That has not happened yet. I don't think it's going to happen. She's really good. She will come over here, creep around, climb on this plant. Um, she's broken a couple of it. That's why it's real short and bushy and not real tall or real long um, because she does pounce and climb over everything anywhere she can get. Um, so this in here is the cocoa core um, that I rehydrated and then put some orchid bark in there, mix it up, added some water, helps the humidity stay. Dry side stays about 50, between 45 and 50%. Um, works out great. I water this plant. I actually, um, a little trick I, I, I learned, took from my uh, experience in, in uh, gardening and landscaping. I took the clay pot, which is rather porous. It doesn't actually hold water very well. It, it, it seeps it out. Um, 
and I fill that with water, which then rehydrates the substrate, but doesn't flood it, so water goes everywhere. So I fill that clay pot up, the substrate absorbs it as it takes it. I don't need to worry about water spills. The water gets either evaporates or taken up by the plant and we're good to go. Everything is moist, everything stays humid. Um, Hide is made out of bricks, 12 by 12 tile. We have rocks uh, that are mainly there to one, secure that tile to the bricks um, because it's not, adhe there's no adhesives or anything that are used for that. It's strictly just a tile on top of bricks. Um, and I was afraid that she was gonna climb on that, pull herself off because she does tend to, to use that to kind of pull herself. So bricks, uh, the, the rock is up there. She'll never be able to move those. So there's that and, and we're good to go. Um, I also have rocks and, and, and pieces of tile here holding in this driftwood. Now this driftwood, most of it is probably just temporary. I plan to do a more arboreal section here. Um, once the weather clears up and I can actually go out and pick some good wood um, and sanitize and all that stuff, this will do. It's working great. Um, she hangs out on the sticks all day long, loves to climb them. She's always up and about. I've come in here at times and she's up on the background up in that corner. Um, she'll go and hang out and she's all over the place. Very active. Awesome to see. Uh, my little palm that I originally planted in here didn't do so well. Um, I'm not worried about that. That'll, that's a, that's a, we'll replace that. Pothos seems to be thriving well in here. Um, I do have a grow light. I'm hoping this pothos kind of expands out so I can drape it over. It's helping filter the water, which I'll go into filtration in a second here, but that's an important part of it. Um, I do do 50% water changes twice a week currently. Um, I could probably cut down. Um, I want to make sure that I was doing that as I was giving her the parasite treatments and while I got her fecal checked, I wanted to make sure that all the dead parasites that she was pooping out were removed from the tank and nobody else is going to get sick. So there's that. So the aquarium setup is not pretty. Don't worry, I'm not done yet. I know. So uh, I got driftwood in here, power head that I typically, I really haven't used. It's, it's, it's kind of loud. Um, I was using it pretty heavily in here before I installed the sump. Uh, that's on here. So that is the uh, outflow for the overhead sump that's on here. Um, in this tank, I do have convict cichlids. Uh, there are uh, there's a, a pair of severums in here. Obviously, the bright orange blood parrot, and then I have uh, African cichlids in here. And as you can see, there's baby convicts swimming around everywhere because they breed prolifically. So with that, um, these are all fish that I wasn't gonna cry if I lost. They're not expensive. Most of these I bred myself. I do breed fish pretty regularly here. So it is, uh, I have tons to spare. Um, I've actually fed Leela a couple of these as feeders. Um, there's some ones in here that got away from her that ended up surviving. So here we go. Um, they're, they're, they're living. Um, I am gonna get this, this, this box filter out of here. Um, that was temporary until I had the sump and the kinks worked out in that, which now they are, so everything is working good. And then I have some floating plants there that um, also help filter the water, provide some cover for the fry so they can grow up. Um, and then Leela did happen to drag all this sphagnum moss in here, which is fine. This water that you see is tinted because of the sphagnum moss. It's fine, it's tannins in the water. Um, they have antibacterial effects on the water. You've seen black water aquariums. If you're into aquariums, you know that tannins are not necessarily a bad thing. They can be ugly if not taken care of, but it's this color and I change this water 100% every week, 50% twice a week. So uh, there's that. So this filter outtake goes up through the outtake that's drilled in the plywood. It then runs up the side of the tank here and it goes into my 20 gallon overhead moving bed sump. Um, I did do this backwards. I was really excited with the drill. I busted three 20 gallon tank, 20 gallon long tanks that I had trying to drill. I normally don't drill my tanks. I use PVC overflows. That wasn't gonna work in this application. So uh, I got the drill bits and drilled it. I drilled it backwards. So intake is on this side of the, off, uh, of the, the aquarium, but it comes into the sump here, goes up and over through this sponge that's here, 
and then there's egg crate here that keeps the K1 filter media locked in there, pressed against the sponge, and this is aquarium glass from one of those aquariums that I did break, uh, and that's sectioned off to four times, so I got four dividers in here. Uh, but the K1 uh, and K3 moving bed filter media, this filter does not stop, it moves, it's efficient, it's great. My first moving bed filter, I have so much K1 media because I wasn't sure how much to buy, so I bought a cubic foot that's way more than I needed, um, so I have a, a whole bunch of that left over. Um, and then, it, so it comes through the bottom, you always want your moving bed to flow up through the media rather than down under the media. Um, so that's that, so that moves 24-7. Um, sometimes you gotta knock the, the, the cable and get stuck down there. Uh, it then outflows down through here and into the drain, which then comes back down, wraps around the tank, and goes back down to come out here. Uh, I am gonna put a spray bar. I need to figure out another way to do that. Um, one regret with this enclosure is that with the tiles, there's no way to properly light this tank. So I have a shop light on the side of the enclosure that gets light to the fish so you can see them. And uh, I'm gonna, I gotta find a, a, a solid waterproof light that I could stick in there to go down so I can get rid of the shop light. Um, I'm gonna open this panel up here and, and, and put hinges on it with a, with a, a, a locking mechanism so I can edit and, and go in there and move stuff. There's no real pressure being put on from, from here. Most of the pressure is on the back and the, the sides. And then um, to make sure that this plywood was thick enough, I did buy a piece of MDF to put over the top here so this doesn't bow. Um, I do have a little bit of a bow um, I was concerned about, but it's working fine. It's been up and running for about a month now um, and it works great, no leaks, no nothing like that. Um, so yeah, filtration wise, we have that. And then I have this little waterfall here, which uh, has purigen and, and, and some other things in there, some, some, some lava rock. Uh, the pothos helps filter out a lot of the nitrates, helps keep the water fresher faster. Um, and that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna figure out how I can get that plant into the water and not make a mess and not have it be in my way, um, which not a hard thing. I just need to figure out what I wanna do because there's a lot of options. Um, I also have a uh, reptile fogger, so I struggled with humidity. Even with this 75 gallon aquarium and this 24 inches, well, it's really open all over the place. It probably catches some of that condensation under the, this, the, the tile, um, but that's all sealed in silicone and I'm not worried about the wood rotting or anything like that. Um, I have a nice little ramp into the water, um, but humidity, I was struggling with it. I couldn't, it was, you know, this side, the cool side was fine. The dry side was getting down to like 30% humidity. I did not like the way that was going. They're tropical animals. They live in the rainforest. They need humidity. So I went out, bought this $30 fogger off of Amazon uh, and that runs down into the tank and I can change that easily. Uh, run and it fogs as I want it to. Um, I have it on low, it runs all night, it runs uh, for an hour sporadically throughout the day, keeping the humidity nice and good. Um, there's a good gradient, so on the cool side, let's take a look here, that is 86 degrees with a 73% humidity. I don't know if you can see that, it's not showing up on camera, I apologize. Um, great, that's where it's wanted to be. I don't want to go lower than 75, 85 is that sweet spot. Uh, coming up here to the uh, more reliable and more expensive hygrometer, thermometer. Um, we're sitting at 45 in the, in the center of the enclosure. Um, a pot that's expected, heat rises. It's, it is what it is. That's right where I want it to be. A little bit hot. I have a fan I can run in here. That's actually what that mental is there. Is a uh, exo it's exhaust fan. I actually pump air into it to keep the humidity up rather than pulling the humidity out. So there's that um, and then on the basking side this basking spot my temp gun reads uh, anywhere between 105 and 110 on that top rock that's the hottest point of the basking spot that's perfect she normally doesn't bask I think it's too hot for her but she, she regulates her own temperature she listens to her instincts she does fine um, she'll go up here if it's cold out I live in Western New York it's cold um, 
it was 13 degrees outside last week and windy and nasty and it was cold in here this this enclosure stayed the same the plywood insulated it great on top of that you figure you have uh, 10 cans of spray foam insulation and in, built into this background so that works but hot side stays 99 uh, anywhere between 99 98 to 97 to 99 it's this it's that's about as hot as it'll get with a 49 percent humidity um so yeah that's the enclosure uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments or uh, any recommendations i'm open to it all um, i am planning on revamping the lighting here this is not it didn't work how i planned i i ordered some things online i thought i was ordering one thing like ceramic light fixtures but that is plastic no heat light can go in there that's a night infrared bulb it's fine it helps keep the temperature i have tons of ceramic heat emitters i need to get the right fixtures i have the rest of my fixtures on my turtle tanks um, and then i have a plant light and then the curly q uvb i'm gonna remove this floodlight fixture here these bulbs don't get hot but i'm gonna put in a light bar a uvb light bar um, once i can find one for the right price on sale all that stuff i'm a I'm a cheapo. I like to do it all myself, uh, as you can tell by this massive thing culture. Um, so yeah, let me know if you got any comments, if you want to see anything else. Um, I am going to try to do some different videos here with my other pets. Leela is great. I also have tons of different uh, animals, including my flower horn cichlids. This is Optimus Prime. That's Chica. My cichlid or my flower horn breeding setup here. Um, growing out flower horns uh, for sale. Um, kind of straight away, Super Red Dragon. This is a Super Red Dragon heavy Trimac female with a King Confa pearly white male here against the blue background. Um, these two are both about two years old. Uh, she's got some lip fungus that I'm treating with some, uh, some medication. And my other favorite tank in the house, this is Pancake, my albino pearl stingray. He's a male, he's happy. He's about 12 inches in diameter. He's gonna get big. Probably not as big as the females, but um, he'll get big. And he's super friendly, super active, super hungry all the time. Uh, and he creates a lot of ammonia in this tank. Um, and then I have, in that same tank, I know it's taboo, don't keep flower horns with other fish. They should be alone, yada, yada, yada. This is my breeding pair of flower horns. This dude, this is Ninja Fish, named by my six-year-old. Uh, he's about a year old. He came from J4 Flower Horns in Chicago. Um, I actually won him and Mr. Pancake here in a raffle, in two different raffles during uh, the first couple months of the pandemic. So both of these guys have been on possessions. This, I don't have a name for her yet, but she is a Golden Base uh, Flower Horn female, proven female. Um, I want to breed these guys. The problem is, is that Mr. Pancake here likes fish eggs, and that's a problem um, because every time she lays, he is fertile. I have confirmed he is 100% fertile. There were live young. She's getting to the a, a better size to breed her now. She's not even a year old yet, but she's a proven female. She's laid for me three or four times. I've had her for about six months. Um, so I am going to get some breeding action going in here once I get Mr. Pancake here his forever home in a 240 gallon aquarium. Uh, and then I also have, so to the side, all my African cichlids, peacocks, and bunas, some uh, Venustas haps. These are all my guys. Uh, these aren't my breeders. This is more my show tank. The, the fish that are in here got me into fish. This, these blue zebras here, um, I'm on like the seventh generation. They were the first fish I ever had that bred. I had one 20 gallon fish tank uh, with two pet store cichlids in here, and uh, like pet chain pet stores. They were actually these, these blue zebras came from Pet Supplies Plus here, and uh, they had babies. And I had 100 blue zebras, and I'm like, all right, we're gonna go African cichlids. So this is a 125 here. Uh, escaped with bricks and all sorts of different rocks. There is a live plant in here. I know, and Buna cichlids with a live plant, that's uh, unheard of, but they don't really pick at it. Uh, I can't say the same for some other plants here. 
um, but this Boca, they don't touch it. Um, it floats around the tank. I have plant weights on it, but it doesn't really move. Uh, and then I have my PVC overflow going to a sump below, uh, along with sponge filters in here. This sump pushes, uh, turns the tank over about three times an hour. Um, but yeah, that's uh, those are my Africans. And I also got little Donatello right here, along with his uh, tank mates, which is a uh, Ochinta map turtle. Sorry for the algae. I'm not really cleaning to do a video. It wasn't a uh, wasn't in the plan, but here we are. Um, and then there's also two other musk turtles in here. Um, so we have the ninja turtles here, uh, which is great, along with some guppies, some African cichlid fry that were meant to be fish food, and here they are still alive, uh, and some German blue rams, which breed. There's, I put a pair in here, and now there's about 100 of them in here. Uh, I raised them up pretty good. We got a little, little musk turtle sticking his head out here. Uh, hopefully I have a pair of these and they'll breed. The oldest ones in here are about two years old. And then this is my uh, most profitable tank in my entire collection. Uh, these are Blue Velvet Neo Caradenia Shrimp. Um, I sell them for about two bucks a piece. Um, they are blue blue. I've kind of worked on this line pretty strategically here um, with the culling process and pulling guys out. Sorry, the camera's not focusing really well. Um, but there is about a thousand shrimp in here. Um, I have it on black gravel, so you can't really tell on camera, but they're all over here along with ram's horn snails and baby bristlenose plecos. I think my male's in there on some eggs. Um, but yeah, that's no, he's not in there, but he's probably on the side. Yep, on the side there. Um, and this tank uh, produces me about 200 bucks a month. Um, and it's really the only tank I sell out of here. I have some other projects going. I have some Caradenia shrimp. Um, I have um, a whole bunch of different African cichlids. I'll go through my entire fish room in another video, but um, those are the other stuff I'm gonna start kind of highlighting on this channel, make it, uh, uh, give you a, a glimpse of my, uh, my collection here. So everybody, thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, I don't know what I did. I don't know if you guys like it. I have a hundred subscribe. I've hit the, the hundred subscriber mark. Um, I started this channel about a month ago with, I don't know, two subscribers. Um, and one of them was me from another account. So um, thank you guys for subscribing. Thank you for watching. Please, uh, any comments or feedback is low. Please like, share, subscribe. Uh, get, get the word out to your friends. Uh, I don't want to get too big, but uh, you know, I, I want to let it be known that you know this is this is what I do. This is a lot of fun. So later.